As an Android user for many years, I was surprised by the number of features Apple copied from Android with iOS 18 to be more flexible and smarter than ever before. Google also has its own share of copied features from iOS, so it's a no-brainer that we need a comparison to see how they stack against each other. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the home screen, which is the most hyped change. Apple marketed this feature in a way that made me believe that I can place my apps and widgets wherever I want, which is not exactly the case, so let me explain. I tried to mimic my Android's home screen on the 15 Pro Max and that's when I started to see the differences. I tried to place my clock widget the same way, but I found that on iOS 18 I have to stick to the grid. For example, I can either place it on the left or right, while on Android I can place it on the left, center, right or somewhere in between, and the same applies to the vertical placement. Another problem with iOS 18 is when you resize the widget you only have two sizes when it comes to the width. It's either half or full. While on Android, your widget can be as small as an app icon, one third of the width or two thirds. iOS 18 also added the ability to resize the widget without the need to remove it like before with a quick shortcut in the overlay menu, which is nice. But it messes up my home screen every time I use this feature as it keeps repositioning my icons and widgets while doing the action, which is one of the things I generally hate about iOS. In contrast, Android keeps everything in place while resizing and ordering, which is much easier. Additionally, on both you can modify the screen size. iOS only offers two options, small which is the default, or large which removes the app names and makes the items slightly bigger. On Android, you get a slider with five different sizes to choose from. In addition to the ability to modify the grid size, you get five different options from 2x2 up to 5x5, and this is something you cannot do on iOS. So far, Android is ahead, but it lags behind in some areas like the inability to multi-select apps like iOS, which saves a lot of time in organizing the home screen. The second one is the lack of reordering or hiding home screen pages, which is something other Android manufacturers offer for years, but Google decided not to. And lastly, with iOS 18, you can convert the widget into an app icon and vice versa, which might save you some steps in certain scenarios. So overall, Android 15 wins this category and the features it lacks are not as important as what it offers. And now let's talk about the home screen styling, which has the same concept as Android's Material U. Starting with the similarities on both, you can give your icons and widgets a monochrome look. It's called themed icons on Android and tinted on iOS 18. Each OS automatically picks the most dominant color from your wallpaper to style the items with the ability to choose a custom color from the available options offered by each OS, either in a form of a slider or a carousel. But there are fundamental differences between the two in this area. On Android, it's a system-wide change not only for the home screen, which means the color palette you choose will reflect on the icons, widgets, the quick settings, the keyboard, inside apps like messages and photos, and more. While on iOS 18, it will only change the home screen icons and widgets. Secondly, Android generates different palettes. Each one consists of multiple colors, one out of which is the dominant, while others are used to color the secondary items of the OS, like the notification dots and widget icons, for example. And it doesn't only stop here, but you also get the dual and single color options if you want to tune it down a bit and make it more consistent. On the other hand, iOS 18 offers only one color for everything, which you can pick using the slider or from the wallpaper by using the eyedropper. But I have to give the credit to iOS in few things. First, you get a color saturation slider, which is missing from Android, and I found it to be very convenient. Secondly, you can darken your app icons and widgets, which is also available on Android, but on iOS you can activate it separately without the need to turn on the dark mode like on the Pixel. And lastly, on iOS, you can darken the wallpaper, while on Android, this feature requires activating the bedtime mode, so iOS 18 offers more flexibility here. Before moving to the next part, let's compare how each OS colors the app icons as it makes a big difference in the overall look. iOS 18 forces all icons to match your preference even if it's not designed for iOS 18, so it's more consistent. The only downside is you might end up with a bad-looking tinted icons in between. Android also suffers from a similar problem, which is if the app doesn't support the feature, you will end up with normal icons side by side with the themed ones, which looks odd. So I will call it a draw. And the last thing to talk about is the exclusive features offered by each OS. Starting with Android, we have the cinematic wallpapers, which separates the subject from the background, giving you an immersive 3D look to your home screen, which is missing from iOS 18. 
and the ability to generate unique wallpapers using AI with 12 different categories to choose from with the option to modify the command prompt to your liking. The two exclusive features you get on iOS are the ability to blur the home screen wallpaper natively without the need to use a third-party app like on Android and the ability to choose between multiple filters for your wallpaper. So these are the main differences between the two in how they can style your home screen. I found it hard to declare a winner in this category as each one has its own pros and cons but when it comes to the features count, Android wins. Now it's time for the lock screen. We already know that iOS is the superior in this area for its long list of customization options that you won't find on Android, like applying different filters to your wallpaper, the depth effect that blends nicely with the clock, the ability to add widgets to your lock screen, live activities which is very convenient, create a lock screen gallery, and link any of them to a specific focus mode, adjust the clock font, language, and color, plus with iOS 18 you get a new gradient color option for the clock, and many more. Google tried to copy some of these features like the ability to adjust the clock style, color, and size, and that's pretty much it. The only thing that Apple copied this year is the ability to customize the lock screen shortcuts. Even though Apple is late to the game, but the number of options available is massive. It includes everything you could ask for, with the option to conveniently search for the toggle instead of scrolling endlessly. On the other hand, Android only offers 80 choices, plus it doesn't give the option to select an app like iOS does. So overall, in the lock screen category, it's an easy win for iOS 18, and I hope Google will start to implement some of these features in the upcoming updates. Next, the control center. As it got a complete revamp with iOS 18 and added most of the missing functionalities that we had on Android for a long time, like the ability to add or remove controls inline without the need to access the settings, which is a huge plus. Third-party apps can add their own controls in the future, the ability to create multiple pages for better organization, and the power button shortcut. So far, it's very similar to Android, but there are some important differences. Starting with the things that Android lacks, in iOS 18, you have the ability to search for controls, which is very convenient, resize them instead of having similarly sized blocks that look identical, they can be placed freely with the ability to leave gaps, and the number of options available is massive when compared to Android. In contrast, Android has some convenient features that are less important but nice to have, like the settings button, the ability to tap the time to access the clock, the task manager that shows what apps running in the background with the ability to force quit any of them, and lastly, the multi-user switcher. So in terms of features, I think iOS is ahead, but when it comes to the ease of use, Android has the edge in some areas. First, iOS 18 didn't address the fact that you have to stretch your finger all the way up to access the control center. In contrast, with a swipe down on your Android home screen, you get access to your notifications and the quick settings with ease. The pull-down gesture on iOS is reserved for the spotlight search, which is nice, but the swipe-up gesture is not utilized, which is something Apple can use to enhance the reachability of the control center and the notifications center. The second issue is the wireless controls. First, you don't get the option to add individual tiles for the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. They are only available as part of the wireless connections group. Yes, the first three controls can be triggered with one tap, but the smaller ones require expanding, which is an extra step for a simple thing. Not to mention that for you to see the available Wi-Fi networks or Bluetooth devices, it requires another tap after the expansion. The other available option for wireless controls is the full screen list. It's a good option as it requires only one tap to toggle or see the available networks, but you cannot resize it to fit within the first page of your control center, so you have to use a separate page which requires scrolling. Even with the new quick scroll gesture, it doesn't feel that easy to deal with. In contrast, Android's Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth tiles are much more convenient, just one tap gives you everything. There are other scenarios that enforces the same idea, but I think these two scenarios deliver the message. The only annoying thing on Android is the inconvenient way of adding new tiles. First, you have to scroll all the way down, then drag the tile all the way up until you reach the right spot, which is a hassle. While on iOS it feels like a home screen and much easier to deal with, but we don't do this task as frequent as toggling the controls. So overall, I will call it a draw as iOS 18 wins the features while Android 15 wins the ease of use. Now let's compare hiding apps. Both companies have totally different approaches. Apple took the simple route by giving iOS 18 users the option to hide the same instance of any app into a hidden folder that requires Face ID to get access to. It's easy, convenient, and straight to the point. On the other hand, Android has the private space. 
As the name suggests, it's a separate space to install a separate copy of any app that lives inside this private space without any connection to the rest of the phone. You can even sign in with a Google account different from the main one you use to make it completely isolated. I won't be able to declare a winner here as each one serves a different purpose, but I think most people will prefer Apple's approach as all they need is to hide an app and get it back when needed, while Google went a bit too far. Now let's talk about messages. I did a separate comparison between Apple and Google Messages before the release of iOS 18 and Apple Messages won the competition. After iOS 18, Apple Messages is even better as they copied two features from Android, which are the ability to schedule messages up to two weeks ahead and use any emoji or sticker in tap packs. On top of this, they added more features like the text effects, which animates certain words in your message, the ability to format your text using bold, underline, italic, and stroke, and the RCS messaging support, which is the most exciting change. Now iOS and Android users can enjoy high-quality encrypted chat experience over the internet after the long-term struggle we've been through because of Apple's restrictions. Google also started to offer some of the features we first saw on iOS, like the 15 minutes edit window for sent messages, the profile discovery feature so you can create your own profile, and the satellite SMS. Google didn't bring anything new to the table this year and is still playing a catch-up game with iOS, so with no doubt Apple takes the win in this category. Next, iOS 18 Passwords app. Google has been working on its own password manager for a while and Apple did the same with iOS 18. They have a lot in common, but Apple Passwords has a set of features that makes it stand out. First, you get more categories like the Wi-Fi and verification codes. In contrast, Android only includes your passwords and pass keys, so having everything in one place is a better approach. Secondly, on iOS 18, you get a deleted folder that keeps your deleted passwords for 30 days before completely removing them, which gives you the chance to revert your action if needed. Third, you have the ability to create multiple groups and share a certain set of passwords with them. In addition to the ability to add or remove people later, plus other members can share their own passwords too. On Android, you can only share individual passwords with your family members, and once shared, you have no control over them. So in this case, it's an easy win for iOS 18. Now let's talk about photos. iOS 18 dramatically changed the app design. I personally found it to be very confusing, but there are some cool features added like the complex search queries. For example, when I look for something, it shows how many photos included under each query as I type. And when I choose any of the suggestions, I get even more to narrow down my search, which is very handy. I can also use natural language to search for photos and it works really well even in beta. Improved search is also making its way to Android later this year, which Google calls it Ask Photos. So I won't be able to declare which one is better, at least for now. Apple also promised the cleanup feature that can remove unwanted people or objects from your photos using AI, which is something we've been enjoying in Google Photos for years. Plus, Google Photos has much more AI features like Best Take, Audio Magic Eraser, Photo Umbler, and many more. So I don't think Apple will be able to beat Google in this area, at least for now. With iOS 18, you will also get more grouping features like recent days, trips, and more, which are no different from what we get in Google Photos. So I'm expecting Google Photos to take the lead this year, but let's wait and see when both companies get their final versions released. Next, we have the game mode, which is something new to iOS, so don't expect much out of it. All it does, it minimizes the background activities to improve the game performance, and decrease latency when you use wireless peripherals like the AirPods and game controllers. In contrast, Android's version offers much more, like showing the FPS, quick shortcuts for the screenshots and the screen recording, start a YouTube Live, adjust the performance optimization settings, and automatically activate Do Not Disturb, so Android wins this one. Next, the Mail app, which copied a lot of features from Gmail like the automatic categorization, they even used the same names like primary, promotions, and updates, in addition to email summaries that gives you a quick brief about the email in few bullet points. The rewrite feature, which is equivalent to Gmail's Help Me Write, it takes your input and rewrites it using AI with the ability to adjust the tone and regenerate different results if needed. But Apple showcased four features that Gmail lacks, like the proofread to make sure your message doesn't have any grammar or spelling mistakes, and smart replies that takes you through a set of questions based on the email content, and your answers will allow the AI to write your desired reply. The third one is the automatic consolidation of business emails to make it easier for you to keep track of them. And the last one is in the inbox list. 
And instead of showing the first few lines of the message, it will show you a summary of the most important info that gives you a better idea about what the email is about before even opening the message. Apple is new to this kind of features, so it's hard for me to predict how well are they going to work, so stay tuned for my upcoming comparisons when Apple Intelligence gets released to see which OS is better. Safari is also expected to get its own share of AI features like summarizing web pages which is available on Android for a while, but it will also get a couple of features that Android doesn't have, like the highlights feature that services relevant information in the web page without the need to find it yourself, and the updated reader mode that creates a table of contents list for long articles. Both features are very convenient, but let's wait and see how they work in real life later this year. The last thing Apple copied from Android is the voice recordings transcription, which is part of the Voice Memos app. Google released this feature back in 2019 with the Recorder app, and as expected, it's much more advanced than Apple's version. It can transcribe 42 different languages and dialects versus only English on Apple's site. It supports the speaker label feature, which identifies different voices with the ability to label them, plus it identifies the sounds so it can tell if it's a speech, a dog, or a whistle, which will help you later to search by the sound name to locate the recording, in addition to the ability to summarize recordings, which might also come to Apple's voice memos. The only new thing offered by Apple is the integration of this feature with the Notes app, which is not yet available in beta, but either way, Android takes the lead in this one by far, and I don't think Apple will close the gap anytime soon. So these are the most important features Apple copied from Android. Now let's take a look at what Google copied from iOS in Android 15. The most interesting one is the battery health information. It's exactly the same one as iOS. It includes the capacity, cycle count, manufacturing date, and first use. Not only this, but we are also expecting the charging limit feature of iOS to make its way to Android 15 later this year, so both are pretty much the same. The second feature is the cross-device services, which is equivalent to Apple's continuity features. Now on Android, you can transfer Google Meet calls between your devices and automatically share your Wi-Fi hotspot without the need to enter the password. Google is just scratching the surface here and it's no way near Apple's set of continuity features that covers pretty much everything, but it's a step in the right direction. Google is also working on an audio sharing feature similar to Apple's Share Audio, which allows you to connect two headphones to your phone and enjoy the content with the other person. I got my hands on this feature once in one of the builds of Android 15, but it disappeared. So I'm not sure if it will make its way to the final release, so let's wait and see. And lastly, archiving apps similar to Apple's offload unused apps. The only difference between the two is on Android you can archive apps at any time under settings, while on iOS it happens automatically. So Android has the edge in this one. So these are the similar features offered by each company and how they stack against each other. But we should also expect more exclusive features offered by each OS, which have gone through a lot of them already in the previous categories, but there are even more to talk about. Starting with iOS 18, my favorite feature is Math Notes. Maybe it's not for me, but I think it's really useful for a lot of professionals and students, especially on iPads with the help of Apple Pencil. Math Notes can solve complex equations and draw graphs based on your handwriting inputs, which is impressive. You can find this feature in the calculator and notes apps. iOS 18 also comes with two new cool UI features. When you press any of the physical buttons, it animates as if you are pushing the side borders, which I really like. And the second one is the new flash interface. It looks really cool and innovative. Plus you can control the light beam width. It can go as narrow as a dot or wide to light more surface area, and it works surprisingly well. Moving to Apple Maps, we should see a better hiking experience in all 63 US national parks. It will show you the popular hikes with the distance, route, and voice-guided navigation. In addition to the ability to add it to your library for later use, or you can plan your own hike by choosing the start and end points and set it as one way or a closed loop. With the wallet now, you can transfer Apple Cash between devices by bringing them closer to each other, similar to the name drop feature, which is very convenient. In addition to the ability to access bank installments from banks and the car providers, but they didn't share a lot of details about these two. Another convenient feature coming to iOS 18 is locking an app. So if anyone tried to open it, Face ID authentication will be required and no data related to this app will appear anywhere else throughout the OS. This feature is a middle ground between hiding an app and leaving it exposed 
which is nice. The contacts and devices access now gives you the ability to select what devices and contacts your apps can see, similar to the Apple Photos limited access, but for contacts and devices. The satellite messaging will support iMessage text, emojis, and tap backs on iPhone 14 or later. Next, Apple Intelligence. Beside the features I already mentioned, we should expect a whole new Siri experience. As per Apple, it understands a lot more about you to help you get things done. You can ask for help on how to modify your phone settings or use certain features. It supports in-app actions like editing photos or even transfer data between apps using your voice. It better understands your commands even when you stumble on your own words. It has better context and on-screen awareness so it understands the topic you are referring to and what's on the screen without the need to mention it. Additionally, it will be able to process your information across all apps to help you get things done faster. Apple showed some examples for this one, like automatically filling your ID number in online forms by collecting it from your photo ID image saved in your gallery without any effort from your side, or knowing your mother's flight information from your emails or messages and help you schedule a calendar event based on it. Plus it got a brand new interface with a full screen glowing animation, the ability to use the keyboard not just your voice, and lastly ChatGPT integration which is the most exciting change that might finally make Siri a smart virtual assistant which never been the case based on my previous comparisons with Google Assistant. Not to mention that ChatGPT is even smarter than Google's Gemini, so let's wait and see. Even the notifications will now use AI to prioritize the most important ones based on their content. Plus it summarizes related notifications on your lock screen to give you a quick glimpse about what's going on. They also introduced the new reduced interruptions focus mode that only notifies you about important notifications by using AI. iOS 18 will be capable of generating images and emojis in messages and the other apps like the Genmoji feature. For example, if you couldn't find the emoji you need, you can generate multiple options using a command prompt, or even generate ones based on people's photos from your gallery. Similarly, the image playground is another feature for generating playful images rather than emojis. It will give you multiple building blocks to choose from, so you don't need to build your command from scratch. It offers themes, costumes, accessories, and places. Based on your choices, it will generate multiple images to choose from in addition to applying certain modifications using your own words and choose the style, either animation, illustration, or sketch. In photos, you will be able to search in videos, so you can locate a specific moment in a video, and if the feature works as Apple showcased in the keynote, that will be such an amazing feature. So these are the exclusive features we should expect in iOS 18. Now let's talk about the exclusive features of Android 15. The best one is the single app screen recording. This feature made my life much easier. As I don't need to worry about exposing my notifications or sensitive information from other apps while recording my phone's screen. Google added the same feature to the screen casting so you can only mirror one app to your biggest screen and save yourself the embarrassment that might happen when you get the wrong notification. App pairs is another Android 15 feature. If you are into split screen, now you can save your app pairs by adding a quick shortcut to your home screen, which will save you a noticeable amount of time when you decide to use the split screen feature. You should also expect the device diagnostics features. We already talked about the battery health information, but Google added more, like the storage status that shows the storage remaining lifetime, which is something I've never seen before. Plus adding two new manual tests for the display, one to test the color rendering, and the second to test the digitizer to make sure that all areas are functional and these tests are useful when you buy a second-hand phone. The haptic feedback will also improve with Android 15. Now you will get a haptic feedback while adjusting the brightness and volume. The haptic's strength increases the more you push the slider and vice versa. From my experience, it feels really nice. The adaptive vibration is now smarter with Android 15. It uses the phone's sensors to identify the surface and adjust the vibration strength accordingly. For example, if the phone is on the couch, the vibration increases to better feel it and decreases if it's on a solid surface to be less noisy, which is a smart idea. The webcam mode got a new high quality toggle, which dramatically improves the video quality based on my testing. We also got a new Google Home screen saver. Once you dock or plug your phone to the charger, it will show you your favorite smart home controls, which is a very convenient feature. Last but not least, the volume controls panel got a complete revamp. 
It doesn't only look better, but the sliders have higher precision with a bigger surface area to be more touch friendly. So here's my final verdict after this very long comparison. iOS 18 has a lot more to offer when compared to Android 15. And Apple's move to work with OpenAI to power some of its AI features will make it very challenging for Google to compete as it's much better than Gemini. Plus, Google was very focused on the smart features for many years for getting about enhancing other important things like the lock screen customization options and the home screen pages reordering or hiding. So I hope Google will be able to keep up with iOS in the upcoming feature drops. So that's pretty much it for today. That was my comparison between iOS 18 and the Android 15. Please let me know in the comments what do you think. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.